Hey, how's it going? Mr. Dent here. Today I'm going to be talking about finding magnitude and direction of resultant vectors. The goal of this screencast is for you to be able to choose an appropriate coordinate system for a given situation. I also want you to know how to apply the Pythagorean theorem and the tangent function to determine the magnitude and direction of a resultant vector. Okay, the first thing we're going to talk about is choosing an appropriate coordinate system. Um, I think it makes sense when we're doing, uh, when we have a situation involving our directions such as north, south, east, and west, that we just simply align the y-axis with the north-south line and that we align the x-axis with the east-west line. Now on the other hand, if we have situations involving falling objects or projectile motion, it, it makes sense to align our x-axis with the ground and the y-axis with a line perpendicular with the ground. Now, the truth of the matter is there really are no set rules here. It's, it's the main thing that you want to do is just try to keep it simple and consistent. You don't want to change, you know, how you're doing it in the middle of the situ of your pro of solving your problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into our first problem. And so, uh, I think it's useful when we do this. We we draw these out um, when you're trying to solve one of these problems. And so, um, remember from when when we were solving graphically, we're we're basically going to be making right triangles in this these first few set of problems that we do. And so when we have two vectors that are perpendicular to each other, um, it's, it's fairly straightforward. And so in this situation, we're given um, the airplane is flying due east, 200 kilometers per hour, and then we have a wind um, blowing perpendicular to that, to that velocity vector. And so, and that's going to be 20 kilometers per hour going south. So we can draw this out, um, and you don't have to draw it to scale or anything, but I think it's useful to draw our triangle like I have shown here in this diagram. And so when we do that, so here I'm showing my 200 kilometers per hour due east, and then I have my 20 kilometers per hour um, due south. And... And, and we're just, this will be a situation as if the plane did not correct, the, the pilot didn't steer to, to um, correct for that wind blowing, so as, a, as if the plane was being blown off course. And so um, this, the hypotenuse essentially is going to represent what that actual resultant velocity would be. And so um, these are velocity vectors. They're not displacement vectors, but we can still use the length of this, of this side of the triangle to represent that velocity vector. So we can just simply use the Pythagorean theorem to, to find that side of that hypotenuse, since we know the sides of, of what would be side A and side B. So, you know, and you may want to do this. I, I think it's a good idea to go ahead and, and like I said before, draw it out. And you can label the sides of your triangle. This could be side A. This could be side B. Now, it doesn't matter as, as far as side A and B, what you, what you call them. I could make this B and this, B, this A. However, it does matter that we make the hypotenuse side C because of our relationship of A squared plus B squared is going to be equal to C squared. Since I, have, I know what those sides are, this is going to be fairly straightforward. So we have 200... Uh, kilometers per hour squared plus 20 kilometers per hour squared and so I add those two and um, when I do that I get 40,400 equals C squared and then I'm already showing you what the final answer is but to get that to get rid of our squared remember we would have to square both sides to get rid of that squared and then so we're going to end up with 200 Point nine nine equals C, and so our as far as our magnitude. So remember, we are finding the magnitude at this point. So C is going to be equal to to two two hundred and one kilometers per hour. 
Now, this isn't a complete answer because it says, what is the resultant velocity? So velocity is a vector quantity. That means we need a magnitude, which we have right here. So this would be the magnitude. Sometimes we, we kind of forget what that, that means. So please pay attention to what you're being asked to find. So that is going to be the magnitude. So we're not finished. We need to find the direction. And so again, I think it's useful to keep our, or redo our drawing or use the same one. It doesn't really matter. And you got to understand what angle you are finding here. Because we need, we, we can't just simply, uh, they're going southeast. That's not a complete answer. We want the angle here. So the angle that you're going to be finding is the angle, and, and I, I strongly suggest that you always have it coming off of our east-west line. That is when we're dealing with situations of north, south, east, and west. So we're going to be finding this angle right here as indicated with my blue arrow. And since I'm giving given the side adjacent and I'm given the side opposite to this angle, we're going to use the tangent function to do that. So, so remember the ta tangent of theta, so theta is the angle, is going to be equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent. However, we're, we're not interested in this tangent part, so we got to rearrange this a bit. So theta is going to be equal to the inverse tangent multiplied by the opposite over the adjacent. And so we put those numbers in, and if you're not sure how to do that on your calculator, please ask, and I can assist you on that. And so we're going to get 5.7 degrees. And so, as I said before, we um, it's, this is going to be southeast. Now, how do you, sometimes this, this happens where students don't know what to put for that part. What, you know, how do I word that? And so the way I like to think of it is, you know, this is my east line, and I measured my angle. You know, this was sort of my reference angle, and this is the other line, or this is the reference line, I should say. And this is our other line. So I'm, I'm seeing how many degrees I was away from the, our, of the east line. So I, I like to think of it as south of east um, is how I typically word it. However, you could just write southeast, and that would be perfectly fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and, and do another one of these problems. Um, in this situation, we have a hummingbird. And it, and it flies 1.2 meters along a straight path at a height of 3.4 meters above the ground. Upon spotting a flower below, the hummingbird drops directly downward 1.4 meters to hover in front of the flower. What is the hummingbird's total displacement? Now, I know the wording here doesn't ask for the resultant displacement, but that applies here because the total displacement would be both or or all of the displacements. Now, in this situation, we, we do have two different displacements. Now, I think it's easy to make a mistake and, and lose track of what's being given. And sometimes these situations have numbers that don't matter. And so in this situation, the height, the fact that we're 3.4 meters above the ground does not really matter in this situation. Now it could matter in a, in a different, if it was a different type of question. So don't read this the wrong way that we ignore, we always have something to ignore. So um, in this situation, since we, we flew straight on a straight path, um, you know, basically above the ground, so that would be horizontal, you know, a parallel with the ground. So I drew this out on a piece of paper. So I have 1.2 meters. So here's my first displacement vector. So these are displacement vectors. It doesn't give us meters per second. It gives us meters. So we are finding a displacement. It doesn't matter as far as our way of doing this. No, it doesn't matter because we're doing the same op type of operation, adding vectors and using this technique that I showed you on the previous problem. Okay, and so it's going to drop down 1.4 meters. And so, and these are going to be perpendicular to each other. So I have a nice, or with the beginnings of a right triangle. And so again, we are going to end up finding the hypotenuse of our triangle as indicated with this red dashed line. 
So again, as I said before, I think it's very important that you draw this out. Um, nice, you know, clear so that you can understand or if or for me, if I can come, if I can see that and that that's what you've done, it's going to make it easier for me to help you. If you don't draw something out, it's going to be difficult to, to receive help. So I have my two displacement vectors drawn out. So I know I'm going to be finding side C here. And so again, I went ahead and labeled as such side A, side B, and I'm finding side B. And again, I'm going to be using Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Um, so I just plug my numbers in. Um, so I end up with, you know, when I squared, I, I, I got 1.44 plus 1.96. That, that gives me 3.4 equal to um, C squared. Take the square root of those, and I got 1.8 meters. So, so at this point, all I have is a, um, a magnitude given here. So I have a magnitude. And so since it did say display total displacement, that didn't say just give me the magnitude. It said give me the total displacement. That means I have to have a direction as well. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to write magnitude here just so we remember that's all we have. And now we have to find the direction. And so we have three different possibilities here of angles to find because we're going to be finding an angle we just can't say slanted downward that wouldn't be good enough so you know we, we definitely know it's not going to be this you know our right angle here it's not going to be 90 degrees so it's going to be one of these two well since this was the beginning in in our if you know this if we could draw this out this is coming off of this angle or off of this line um, so this would be our reference line, and this would be what we measure, how many degrees is in between there. So I, I went ahead and drew an arrow here, and I think that's important that you do that so you um, kind of understand and so that it makes sense to you. So again, we're going to be using the tangent function because we have side adjacent to the angle and we have side opposite to the um, angle. And so we're going to be using our inverse tangent function, our calculator, to find theta. And so inverse tangent multiplied by 1.4 um, divided by 1.2, and we get 49.4 degrees. Now, this is a situation that the, you can word this that, that seems reasonable. Now, we don't have any other information as far as, um, you know, this isn't a north, east, south situation. This is an up and down, so basically almost like a falling object. So we could word this. Like this, we could word this, you know, say below the horizontal here. So I've got displacement is going to be 1.8 meters, 4.94 degree or 4, 49.4 degrees below the horizontal. And so I think there isn't, you know, you could say below, below the horizon, um, below a line parallel to the ground, as long as you're giving me something that tells me your understanding of, of that direction. And then if it's, you know, if there's an angle involved, we always need to have that angle. Okay, um, I, this pretty much does it for the screencast. Um, I hope um, you got something out of this. I, I hope you enjoyed um, watching the screencast as much as I enjoyed making it. Um, I will see you in class.